This is Alder's Blood. Uh, it combines a lot of my favorite things, uh, which include uh, permadeath, tactical turn-based combat, uh, HP Lovecraft style despair, and dark fantasy, and body odor. So let's get into it. This is the first tactical game I've ever played where you actually have to think about your own body order as like a tactical concern. All right, so where did I leave off? I've been playing a bunch of games this week because I knew I was gonna do this marathon stream tonight and create a bunch of videos. This is just the first of many videos, uh, but that means I've been playing a bunch of games and I have to remember where I was in each one. Okay, so my current objective, which you can't see because it's behind my head, is to go to the rattle. So I've got this, this team. Actually, let me back up a little bit. Let's show you who I am. So I've got this team of hunters. They call themselves hunters. They're like monster hunters. Um, they're also like, they evoke that sort of like Western gunslinger kind of vibe. This whole world, it's a little bit reminiscent of Darkest Dungeon in that it's got this sort of Cthulhu myth mythos inspired dark fantasy, you know, dead gods, all kinds of, you know, horrific things happening in the story, uh, you know, cults and monsters. And, uh, but it's also got this kind of Western vibe or, or maybe like a dark tower vibe to it. Um, so I'll got these hunters here, a team of them. Um, I'm trying to keep them all alive, though apparently I can sacrifice them. That's the thing I haven't done yet. Um, but I'm, I'm sending them around to, uh, to fight these monsters and go on these missions and I'm trying to figure out, in this world, apparently, the god of this world was killed by a bunch of humans with hubris, and now it's rotting, and, like, monsters are feeding on its corpse, and it's just the world is falling apart. And so we are people who are trying to fix that. So um, we will come back to this screen a little bit later. For right now, let's go on a mission. So, okay, we are down here. This little horse represents us. The mission is up here. So I click on that, it says it's going to take me 48 food to get there. We're going to be eating the whole way. I've got 70 food, so I think that means I can make it. Uh, so let's accept that. Though It's going to be more than half my food, so getting back is going to be a challenge, unless I can scavenge or buy some. So we head over here, and we've got a journal entry. As we enter the village, the people scatter and disappear. A chorus of windows and doors slam shut through the streets. Are they scared of us, or is this something else? Maybe Ruth can explain. Let's talk to Ruth. Finally. Well, 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 look who it is. You lot took your time, didn't you? Nice to see you too, Ruth. You said that hunters would be needed here. Yeah. <laughs> hunters are always needed here at the edge of the forest, young man. Ruth, please, tell us what you need. You can count on Chief. Chief is my name, by the way. The I'm the leader of the, of the group. We will see, we will see. The villagers are frightened half to death, and we're not talking about standard woodland scares. Any sane person should be afraid of what's out there, but this is something else entirely. They talk of strange lights sighted above the tree line, horrible noises. They whisper that the ghost of the grim hunter is awoken. That must be why they scattered at the sight of us. They're good, honest people, but superstitious to the extreme. I suppose it serves them well alone out here in the wilds. The city does not support them? The city? Support this sorry lot? Certainly not. They're outsiders, Hunter. Only one step above you exiles. They're expected to play their part until a beast take their guts out. You can't change their lot in life, but you can help them. The question is, will you? Do the villagers know exactly where these strange noises and lights are coming from? Ugly Tom says it's all coming from the hollow woods, one of those old ruins deep in the forest. We'll see if we can find anything. Okay. So we've got a contract in the hollow wood. So she just sent us, okay, so we were just coming here to talk to her, but we actually need to go to the hollow woods to go on this mission. So let's go. 12 more food. I'm starting to really run low. Actually, I wonder, can I buy food while I'm here? Yeah, it looks like there's no shop. Normally a shop would appear here. So I'll worry about food after we've gone on this mission. Yep, running low. All right, so we've got a mission. I can only bring three hunters with me. Uh, this hunter has some worrying levels of corruption. So let's swap them out for Renoir. 
I don't know. I think as they gain corruption, they gain negative traits uh, that make them worse in some ways, while they're also like leveling up in other ways. Um, and so, yeah, if, if they're getting a little high, I don't want to take them to encounter some monsters. So I've got a guy with an axe and a pistol, big sword and a pistol, pistol and a knife, or a rifle and a knife. So, yeah, nice little variety. And this says here, um, get some prizes. Great. Let's just go on the mission. All right, so in a lot of tactical games, your goal is to kill all the enemies. That is not the goal in this game. The enemies are deadly. If they notice you, they'll mostly kill you the turn they notice you. Um, this is a very Lovecraft-inspired world where life is fragile. Everything is beyond your, your reach as far as defeating things goes. And, uh, I mean, you can defeat the enemies, but... It takes careful planning and a lot can go wrong. So this is a watcher. I need to sneak around and not let this see me because it'll alert other enemies if it does. Um, several things to notice about the battlefield. It's hex based, uh, which is kind of fun and unusual. Every hex has got a dot on it. These purple dots are places where I'm concealed, but I'm only visually concealed in these dots. Uh, you'll notice each character has got this waft coming off of them. This is their smell. If a monster, if you cross a monster with your smell, they will notice you and they'll come after you. Um, and so having to manage your own body odor is one of the most unique things in this game, and it's what makes me love this game. So this is the area where I can move easily. Um, I can also move beyond it. You see this little... Um, spec that appears above my cursor that tells me how many of my stamina points I'll spend if I try to go a little bit further. So you actually have a lot of flexibility in how well you move, but if you run out of stamina, you can't act for an entire turn. So you have to be very careful with it. Looks like the first thing we need to do, though, is check out this bloodstain. Blood. Human blood. Let's follow the trail. Okay, so it heads over here. But we don't actually want to walk in front of this guy. So I'm going to send this guy over here to hide. The actions that you take happen very quickly. And so one mistake I often make is if I'm a little bit off a character that I want to click, sometimes I'll accidentally move their friend instead of clicking the other character. So I'm trying to teach myself some discipline about not clicking the characters, but cycling through them over here. So this character has a much higher move than everyone else. Okay, so you see these monsters up here? If I let my scent cross these monsters, they will see me and come after me, so I have to be very careful. Okay, so here's something I'm realizing. This watcher could see me if I run in front of it, but I don't think it has a sense of smell. It only watches. These guys have a sense of smell. So actually, what I probably wanted to do was not come above the Watcher. I probably do want to go beneath the Watcher so that these guys can't smell me. So right now, this guy's watching in my direction, and I don't think I can leave these bushes without a problem. Um, I could toss a pebble, see if I can attract him away. These characters sometimes say things that aren't quite appropriate, but I think this game is... I don't remember now if this is an early access game or not. It might still be in development, so I'm leaving nitpicks aside. Okay, so it looks like they're out of range now. Oh, nope. So these characters can be pretty unpredictable. Um, there are some games like Invisible Ink where you can very tightly manipulate what the characters do um, in order to be able to stealth around them. That is not true in Alder's Blood. Uh, characters are frequently doing unpredictable things. So, like, maybe that was good. Okay, so he's already looking that direction. Okay, so maybe we're maybe we're good actually. Um, if he's already turned around, 
then maybe I can move these characters. Oh, well, okay. What I'm going to do is move these characters. So this guy, I think he can only see them. Yeah, you can see this little red line that appears when I would move into a square where this guy can see me. So as long as I stay south of the log, these guys probably won't detect me and this guy won't see me as long as I stay over on the left side here. So I'm going to move each of the characters. You see there's this little tiny yellow highlight that appears to tell me which side I'm taking cover from. I think the yellow is low cover and red would be high cover. So I hope that my characters are invisible down here from these guys who are moving around up there. And then the Watcher hopefully will go to sleep and my guys can dart across. Okay. Yes. Oh, it looks like we had some folks uh, join me in the chat here. So we've got Awesome Twitch Dude. Um, I can't tell you when stuff's coming out for State of Decay until the uh, you know marketing folks tell me what I can do. Um, Adam Survives is here. Thank you. And uh, yeah, it looks like Adam's headed to bed, but it's good to see you anyway. And Daisy Chainsaw is here. So thanks for joining me, everybody. Um, okay, so the Watcher's gone to sleep. So my characters can safely dart across the way. I'm ner can I take them this far? That makes me nervous. Let me go part way. You notice the waft of scent is still far enough south that the monsters that are up here can't smell us. If we had tried to cross up here, our scent would cross the monsters, and the monsters would come after me. So, okay, it looks like I can go at least this far. I'm going to spend two stamina to bring my character a little further. And I, I took took that in two steps because I wasn't certain if there were going to be more monsters over here. But I don't see any, so that's giving me some hope. So in this game, you really hope each time... that like Basically, if I can get through an entire mission without any combat, that's a success. That's what you're hoping for. There's a lot of games where that's not the case, where you want to take out as many enemies as you can. In this game, you're just grateful to survive. And they, they try to train you in that, in the tutorial. Okay, good. He can't see me. I'm recovering my stamina. That's what that... Uh... Yeah, so, so each of my characters spent stamina to move further than they normally can. So Solomon Epstein just showed up and said, Hey, Jeff, so this is that Twitch that you kids seem to like so much. Yeah, so I actually, I feel like I don't understand Twitch at all uh, compared to a lot of the folks that uh, that watch me and that watch the um, the State of Decay stream. Um, I feel like a complete noob. But I love it because it gives me sort of an opportunity and an excuse to play a lot of games that I might otherwise not feel like I had time to play, like Aldrich Blood. You know, when I know that I need to sort of demo this game for a bunch of people, um, it really makes me take the game seriously and try to learn as much as I can from it while I'm playing it. All right, so we again move people pretty far. So let's... Oh, this guy, I hadn't noticed him. Okay, so this guy is facing this direction. He won't see me as long as I stay behind these rocks, it looks like. Because if he was going to see me, I would get one of those red lines. So, and move Renoir. It's an excavation site that explains lights and sounds. But who is digging all the way out here in the forest, and why? Floater, be careful. Our traps will be no use against her. Floater? What floater? I guess he sees an enemy that's called a floater. I don't, I don't know what that is. I've never encountered one before. Okay, so let's get Ethan up there. And let's get Maxwell up here. So I think I need to exert some control over where that thing goes. Because if it comes much closer to us... It might detect us, and then we have to fight. Oh, okay. It was right at the edge of the range of that. I thought it might pick it up, but it looks like not. So let's try again, this time closer. So we're throwing pebbles to get its attention. So I think a lot of the time you want to throw the pebble right before you move, 
and not the turn before because he's going to wander over here and then he could wander any direction afterwards. So actually, I should have saved that, but I can still do it next turn. Awesome Twitch dude wants to know um, if they've said when we're going back to the office yet. I don't feel like they have. I mean, they they keep making guesses. They keep put, um, they keep setting a date. Like, okay, we might, we definitely won't come back until this date. But they keep pushing that date back, so it's hard to be sure. Um, but Undead Labs has actually been remarkably well set up um, to to handle everybody working from home, um, and so I'm kind of not that worried about it. Like, I will be able to keep putting out updates to State of Decay 2, kind of regardless of when we go back to the office. Okay, so now we've got two of these guys. This is kind of a mess. What are my options here? So I'm trying to get all the way up here. I probably want to stay... Part of me wants to stay as far south as I can, because it looks like I've got a lot of stuff to hide behind, but I'm realizing my stench is so long up here. Maybe I'd actually be better off going over here to the north. I think that is actually the smarter move. So, if this guy goes up here, looks like he won't be seen. Oh, crap. Nope. Nope, that. This guy's here. He could see me anytime. This guy's over here. This could be... A horrible plan and if I go over here my scent will definitely pick that guy up so now that I've reconnoitered um, I'm coming back down again and we're gonna see where these characters move because uh, as things stand this is not going well for my team maybe I just do have to go far south, far enough south looks like we've got dots all the way down to here so maybe I do just need to go far enough south that these guys can't smell me So yeah, let's um, let's pause it. I mean, unpause it. I mean, end the turn. That's what I'm talking about. End the turn. Okay, so I can see this guy. He's looking this direction. These guys are all just still staring at us. So I think what we need to do is have Ethan toss a rock to get this guy pointed another direction. And then Maxwell, can Maxwell go anywhere without this guy seeing him? Yeah, it looks like if he goes here, that's a problem. But as long as he stays over here, he's okay. So let's move Maxwell down here. And then can Maxwell turn this guy around? Or does he even need to? Maybe he doesn't need to. Let's not attract undue attention if we don't have to. Okay, so can Ethan make it down here without getting seen? Looks like he can. And Renoir. How f oh, Renoir is going to have some trouble. He's got to go a long distance and... Oh, and these guys didn't make room for him in the bush. Well, that's the problem. Here, Ethan, you move. Okay, now... Maybe Renoir just can't, doesn't have enough movement points. He can't go far enough. All right, well, let's um, not get Renoir killed. Let's just move him over here. And wait. Okay, so he went to investigate. He's like, nothing here. And then, oh, now we don't know where he is. That's going to be a problem. Knowing where your enemy is is very important to be able to sneak past them. So let's... I think Maxwell, Maxwell is at least my most agile person. Okay, let's move him here. Okay, his smell is just barely going to miss this guy. The other guy, he might be getting too close. I don't know about this. Ooh, ooh, okay. If this guy turns around and goes the other way... Maxwell will be smelt. In fact, I th okay, let's go one step at a time. Okay. 
I think Maxwell might be the only one who can go this way. Because the others don't have enough stamina to get by. Because that monster's right here. Okay, let's move Renward down here. And Ethan right here. I think we're going to be okay. Let's see. Okay, he stayed out of scent range. Everyone's regaining their stamina. Ranathcord asked, does uh, silver have any special properties when fighting these monsters? If so, you should give Maxwell a silver hammer. I don't remember if silver had anything to do with it. I think that um, they... I think they're using mostly normal weapons. Um, and I don't think it's like the Witcher where they have to get out a special silver weapon to fight a monster. Okay, so let's have Maxwell continue to scout. Oh, you see that? I should have just gone step by step. His smell just passed across this Shrieker. And so the Shrieker's going to come and investigate now. So let's try to get somewhere the Shrieker will not see me when it goes to investigate. And then let's get Ethan... Okay, if Ethan goes straight east, I think... Whoa, okay, there's the floater. That's scary. Am I actually going to get through this entire session without combat? If I do, that's great for me. I don't know if it's great for the stream, though. <laughs> You guys might want to actually see some combat at some point. Well, we'll see. I'm sure I'm going to do a terrible job at something, and we're going to get into a fight, and I'm going to get everyone killed. I mean, that's pretty normal. All right, he's poking around. He's not going to look... Oh, he's looking towards me. Oh, he sees us. Okay, he's made a bunch of noise that attract everyone's attention. So as soon as they see me, they're able to do a lot of damage. Like, you know, there's a lot of games where, um, you know, you have Overwatch and you can set yourself up to be able to attack the moment an enemy comes in range. In this game, you don't have Overwatch, they have Overwatch. And so as soon as you alert them, they can immediately act and destroy you. I am curious. So these two are in trouble down here. What happens if I send Maxwell up here to complete the objective by himself? It's a banner of kinds. Maybe Ruth will know more about this. Come, let's get out of here. Okay, so now we have an objective to get out, and it's... Ooh, it's down there. Okay, well that's not too bad. Now the question is just... Okay, so Renoir, because he ran a bunch and took damage, he's got low stamina. Ethan's got a little bit more, but it, it will cost all of the stamina he has to take out that monster. So these guys are actually in huge trouble right now. Um, so the Shrieker has got 80 hit points. This could kill it, or could not. There's enough like variance in the damage ranges here that it's really hard to predict whether you're going to succeed at an attack or not. So I'm going to give it a try. Okay, so I took the Shrieker down, but I also took Ethan down because Ethan used all of his um, stamina doing that. Similarly, Renoir, because he's got a net... So he can, and this only costs one stamina. So what he should do is get out of attack range of this guy and net this guy. Already there. Wait, what? So he just, interesting, because he moved in front of the Shrieker, the Shrieker got to make a noise. And now, wait, wait, now Ethan's out of that, oh no, that's just Ethan then, okay. Renoir, Renoir. We still got Renoir. So let's hit this guy. Confirm. 
Okay, so he's immobilized. And they're weak to stab damage. Interesting. So both of my characters now are wiped out. I think they're going to have an entire turn immobile. So we might be in huge trouble still. Um, Maxwell could blow through a bunch of stamina getting over here. But I think that might be worth it. I think as long as I don't use all of his stamina, he can recover. It's if I use all of his stamina, he has to spend an entire turn recovering. All right, let's see how this goes. The floater sees us. They can move so far. It's crazy. So I really should have just run. That's all I should have done was run. They're going to murder my guys. So this guy can't move. And that guy can't move because he's out of stamina. Okay, so this character, okay, he's got a pistol. But the pistol only does 20 to 60 damage. You can't actually kill a, a shrieker in one go. And my guys are going to be out for another turn. So they're just screwed. Yeah, I really should have run. Hey, thanks for joining me, Daisy Chainsaw. Uh, yeah, I'm not... I expect that a lot of folks who are watching me are going to have to run uh, because it is super late at night. All right, well, Maxwell is going to run over here and maybe take a pot shot at somebody. Who can he shoot? Let's shoot this... Sh the other shrieker one that's down to just kill it okay let's not reload that'll take all my stamina can I use my throwing knives okay it only took half a stamina to do that again and if I cost it enough stamina it might not be able to attack Okay, cool. So I've only got two enemies that can attack. My guys might survive this. Renoir's probably dead. Ethan might survive it. Whoa, my guys are both alive. That's crazy. I did not expect that. Okay, so Renoir's got almost no health, but he's got all his stamina. And... Okay, so let's go over here. Can I make it all the way to the exit? I think I can. Okay, what about Ethan? Ethan, can you make it? Ethan's immobilized. Okay, don't know what to do about that. I mean, technically, he could do enough damage to the floater. Oh, to put it on the ground. Okay. Okay, cool. Because it wasn't... I think it's not the health damage that took it down. It's the stamina damage that took it down. So, cool. He's got two stamina left. Looks like shoot doing anything else, though, is going to cost him too much, so we can't do that. However, Maxwell might be able to do something. So Maxwell can get right up behind this guy. Switch to his blade. Cost two stamina to do this. Okay, well, hmm. Well, he can't afford to do that again. He only has four stamina. But if he throws a knife in its face, then it collapses. This one's probably going to get up next turn. And I'm not sure what to do about that. But at least my guy who's got the worst damage done to him is out of the way. So let's see if we survive this. Okay, good. He went after my guy who hadn't taken any damage yet. Everybody else is down for the count. So the question is, can Ethan move? Yes, Ethan can move. So Ethan's going to get in the circle. 
and Maxwell is going to get in the circle. Notice, I am making... Oh, wait. Maxwell doesn't have enough stamina to make it all the way. Oh, my gosh. So everyone's going to get up. Ugh. So why did he not recover stamina? That's interesting. Okay, so we're not quite ready to go yet, apparently. Hopefully we survive this next turn. Come on. Okay, he at least attack Maxwell, who can take it. Oh, but now he's down for the count. Really? Oh my gosh, what? I was one step away, and now we've got a serious problem. Okay, Maxwell can't move, so we're going to have to take these guys out. So Ethan's going to come up here. Going to hit the one with the most health. It's gone. Renoir, he can shoot once. This thing's only got 10 hit points, so it's probably going to die. Okay, okay. Let's get Ethan into the circle, and we're just going to wait till Maxwell recovers. Oh, has the floater lost us? <laughs> the floater doesn't know where we went because we left while it was unconscious. That's awesome. All right, Maxwell, get in here. <sighs> okay, so that is a typical mission in this game. That's how this goes. You spend most of the time trying to avoid conflict. You make some stupid mistake. You nearly get killed, and you barely get out with your life. All right, so ooh, level up is available. That's cool. Okay, so we're here now. We've finished the mission. Our characters are almost dead, so let's go to camp. So we got to set our camping tasks. Uh, somebody's got to stand guard in case somebody attacks us, so I'm going to have the person with the most health stand guard. These three all need to rest and recover their hit points. Now, if I wanted to, I could have one of them craft something. In fact, I've got some crafting tasks queued up here but right now they just need hit points that's all they need um oh wait we have one more problem though we're almost out of food and waiting a day costs food so let's look back at these guys so i think actually we have to send hugo out craft scavenging to get us some food and ethan has to stand guard so hopefully this is a good move um let's wait a day and see what happens So a lot like Darkest Dungeon, this game has got a mission camp, mission camp, mission camp sort of cadence to it. So, okay, so Ethan Gray just acquired a negative trait. Oh, and he scavenged not enough. Oh, he scavenges generally not enough food because of that trait. He's absent-minded. Okay, so we got 40 food, which is good because we ate like 12. And so the characters who were resting recovered some hit points back at them again so okay let's send hugo out again just get, wait because wait let's look at our characters again i think hugo hugo is not okay yeah hugo scavenges extra food so we want to send hugo out scavenging who was it oh, so i love this that maxwell is smelly um, and so that means that he actually has a, a bigger scent trail than everybody else. So we could pick a positive trait for him to get because he leveled up. Okay, so I'm pretty sure he can eat less if I pick this, which I think is really important for when we feel like we don't have enough food. Um, okay, so yeah, so Ethan is the one who's absent-minded, so we should definitely should not send him out scavenging but we're not going to anyway because bad things can happen when you're scavenging he's already at 65 hit points we need this guy to heal up before we would send him out anyway and then Renoir is the one I I got him injured um in my very first mission and so he didn't go out on a lot of missions with the other one so he's kind of behind on the leveling up curve um oh let's restore your health faster because you need it all right anyway so camping tasks 
So this guy is going to guard. He'll scavenge. These two are going to heal. Let's wait another day. All right, successful again. Sometimes this goes badly and you end up losing hit points and losing resources. Um, but it seems like it went well. Everybody's mostly charged up. I don't want to roll the dice again, so even though Renoir's kind of low, I think I'll just leave him off the next mission, take the other three, and we'll probably be okay. So the next thing I would do is go back. In fact, let's just go do that. It's pretty close. we got enough food now that we've been scavenging for a while. Let's go back and wrap up the mission at the Rattle. find any ghosts? No ghosts, no. Seems to be humans, in fact. Looking for something underground. They were gone when we arrived, but we found this. Moor? But what business has that swine rooting around in the forest? You know who this belongs to? Everyone knows Cornelius Moor, at least in the city. He's a banker, fat, rich, and a member of the ruling council of the city. Where can I find him? Did you mishear me, Hunter, or are you simply daft? The ruling council is inaccessible to one such as yourself. Do you think Cornelius Moore, minister of the coin, will meet with an exile impulsively? You need connections. Someone close to him. Someone like me. Ruth, are you sure about this? I don't think he'll be happy after the way you left things. Yeah. Quiet, Duke. You don't know the half of that story. I have the oaf wrapped around my finger in ways that neither of you can understand. Excuse me, but I don't think I follow. Of course you don't. Cornelius and I were engaged once, a long time ago, back when I was young and fair. You may think me frail, boy, but unless you want a split lip and a red cheek, you'd better mind your manners. I'll arrange a meeting with Cornelius. Meet me at the market in two days. In the meantime, you can help the villagers. There's some other tasks they need doing about town. Just let them know there are no ghosts out in the woods first. All right, see you in two days. Maybe staying out here wasn't such a bad idea after all. There are signs of tampering in the wilds, unusual mischief from the great houses, and Duke is getting more trust in his new abilities. So Duke was the character you started with in the tutorial, and you went you were hunting after the corpse of this god, and you end up having a weird experience that changed you and potentially gave you visionary abilities. So Duke is not a playable character anymore. He was only a playable character at the very beginning. Um, so now he's sort of this... He's kind of the inciting incident character, the MacGuffin character who's kind of pushing you forward. Anyway... Now I hear Ride has arrived on horseback without warning. It must have been a dire wind that drove him from the safety of his research camp. I should find him and hear his news at once. Okay, so there's another mission to go on, but I think we've got the point of how this game works. Um, so, you know, it's kind of fun. I've been getting really excited about tactical games um, in the lead up to uh, the release of, of, what was it called? Chimera Team? Chimera Squad? Chimera something. The new X uh, the new XCOM spin-off. Um, and luckily, the universe has provided, and there's a lot of other tactical games coming out right now, and Alder's Blood is one of them. Uh, but Alder's Blood definitely stands out from the rest of them in that it's it's got this darkest dungeon-y sort of feel to it, and definitely sort of the way you have to think about combat is extremely different from, from, from other tactical games that I've played. So it's really interesting and cool. But for now... We are going to get out of here and move on to our next game. Maybe it'll be one of these. I don't know.